Okay, shh, shh. let's pray. I'm going to get started now. I'm going to get started, so shh, shh, shh. so uh, pray with me. Shh, shh, shh. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to class. I'm recording this. We're doing the review, right? Yeah. Let's pray. Pray with me. Dear Lord, dear Holy Father God, thank you so much for this class and for this day. Please bless this class, Lord. Help these kids to pay attention, focus, listen, and learn. Uh, let this review be beneficial for them. Let them be focused and attentive, uh, God, and help them to be respectful so we can get through this quickly. We love you, Father God. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. So from, from this point on, I, if I start hearing voices, I got about three, three little drops of patience within me. And so I'm not going to count them off. I'm not going to tell you I got two left, one left. I'm just going to stop when my three drops of patience get used up. Is that clear? So I should not have uh, any voices at all. No one should be talking. Okay? And if you use up a drop of my patience, I'm just going to tell you to go out of the room. You're going to miss the review. All right. So um, the first thing is cabinet pictorial. Okay? You don't have to write this de all these down. I just want you to have a pencil and paper so you can write down any notes that come to your mind, things that you might want to remember. Okay? So a cabinet pictorial is one of the oblique type of sketching. And the way cabinet pictorials work and oblique sketches work is it's got the front face. You have horizontal lines and vertical lines if it's like a square like this. And then you just go off at an angle um, and you show the width, depth, and height. Um, so there's the cabinet and the cavalier. We'll go to the cavalier next. The cabinet is this one here, where depth is represented as half scale compared to the width and the height. Cavalier is this one, where it's represented at full scale. So if this is a cube that's one inch by one inch by one inch, then the actual lines would be one inch, one inch, and one inch. Whereas here, it would be one inch by half an inch by one inch. Does that make sense? Don't, don't worry about writing it down. I'm not going to give you enough time to write it down. This is a Quizlet that is available to you. Okay, questions? This is the cabinet. Okay. All right. Um, cavalier. Same deal that I just explained, but it's at full scale. Okay. So cabinet is this one. That's half scale. Cavalier is at full scale. Okay. Remember the name Cavalier comes from what it would, an object would look like from riding a horse. So you're viewing it from kind of an up, above angle. Center line. Center line. Sorry. Um, a center line shows the center of a circle or an arc. Okay. It's, you're not going to have a center line on a flat surface. You're not going to have a center line in some random shape. It's for a circle and for an arc. Um, a line which defines the center of arc circles or symmetrical parts. Oh, so I'm sorry. It, if it is symmetric, you're going to have center lines as well. OK? And so here, God bless you, this would be considered a symmetric uh, a center line because this part is symmetric about this axis. Does that make sense to everybody? Get that? All right. So not just circles and arcs. My apologies. Construction, Construction line. Construction line. Well, Construction line, a lightly drawn line to guide drawing other lines and shapes. A construction line is exactly what it sounds like. It's a line that you draw to help you construct other figures. Okay, so do you remember when I was doing those isom the multi-views and I drew it as a box first and then I started cutting things out? When I drew it as a box, those lines that I ended up cutting out, those were construction lines. Those weren't lines on the actual object. They were just there uh, to help me draw the object. Okay, so depth. Um, at this point, I just want to um, draw something. So let's say, forgive my very crude drawing of a cube right now. Um, okay, if this is the front, this is the side, and this is the top. 
okay, the depth would be this dimension here. That would be my depth. Does that make sense? So from front to back would be my depth. Um, so the measurement associated with an object's front to back dimension or extent of something from side to side. It's a little confusing. Okay, dimension. A measurable extent such as the three principal dimensions of an object is width, height, and depth. So when we're talking about dimensions, how many dimensions is this shape here? Three. Three dimensions, right? So because it has width, height, and depth. A dimension line, a line which represents distance. So here is a dimension, and some of you have already started doing dimensions in fusion. Um, here is a dimension. This 4.5 is the actual measurement. This dimension line is that line that shows what I'm dimensioning. So it's these arrows here, okay? Documentation. Um, so documentation kind of has a lot of ways you can think about it, but documentation basically is documents that help you understand something, okay? Documentation is, you can have documentation for software, you can have documentation for uh, an invention. Documentation here it says the documents that are required for something or that give evidence or proof of something. Um, please stop clicking your pencil. Drawings or pen, drawings or printed information that contain instructions for assembling, installing, operating, and servicing. Okay, so the documentation for a machine will have all these instructions. Has anyone built IKEA furniture before? Raise your hand. Okay, so you've seen documentation, you've dealt with documentation. All right, drawing. A formal graphical representation of an object containing information based on the drawing type. There are lots of different types of drawing. We've explored a lot of different types of drawing, but there you go, that's the formal definition of drawing. Edge, the line along which two surfaces of a solid meet. So um, this would be an edge here, okay? Ellipse. Ellipse. Okay, so an ellipse is a beautiful shape. If I have two points and I want to get a point that's the same distance um, that the, the sum of the, this is a little bit weird. If I take this point here, let's say, then the distance from this blue point would be there, and the distance from this red point is there. Okay? Do you guys get that? Do you guys understand that? Yes? Okay. So an ellipse is a shape where all the points, it kind of looks like an oval basically, where all the points along the shape, the sum of the red and the blue is equal, it's, or it's constant. So let's say this is 3 and this is 1. Well, then the sum of those distances is 4. Well, an ellipse is a shape where the sum of the distances is constant. So maybe this is the next point. If the sum of the distances is constant, then the blue, if I told you this distance here was 2, then what would this distance have to be? 1. 2. two. Because 3 plus 1 is 4. So the sum of the distances would have to be constant. That would be 4 in this case. All right. So go ahead and feel free to look them up. Extension, extension line. Extension line. All right. A line which represents where a dimension starts and stops. So for dimensions, you have the dimension line and the extension line. And the extension line goes all the way to the object. So it doesn't like stop before. Sometimes I see people doing that. The dimension line extends all the way from the object and it shows what you're actually dimensioning. Okay. So don't get mistaken between dimension line and extension line. Okay. A dimension line is this line here, these lines with the arrows. An extension line extends from the object to the dimension, okay? A grid, all right, what is a grid? Everyone's seen it in pre-algebra and algebra and whatever. This is a grid, okay? When you've got um, an x-axis and a y-axis, you call that, generally speaking, the coordinate grid or the coordinate plane, right? That's a grid. Okay. Height. 
height. The measurement associated with an object's top to bottom dimension. So I told you, I told you that was depth here. So this is depth. Well, this here would be height, okay? Or this here. Those are both heights. Got that? Top to bottom. Um, hidden line. A line type that represents an edge that is not directly visible. Y'all should know what hidden lines are at this point. Isometric sketch. This is an isometric sketch. Remember, you have these 120 degree angles with the plane of projection. So these angles here are specific in an isometric sketch. Okay? The way that it goes up and down. Now, this here is a perspective. Notice how it gets smaller as it goes out into the distance. That's a perspective. Isometric doesn't get smaller as it goes out into the distance. It remains constant. Okay? That's one of the reasons why it's so valuable as for engineering drawings. A leader line, a line which indicates dimensions of arcs, circle, and detail. So if I had a little circle here and I wanted to give the dimension of that, I could have a leader line that was pointing to that circle and would give, for instance, like 0.5 inches. Okay. And we went through this before. Remember when we went through line types like two weeks ago or so? Okay. A line, I think we all know what a line is. Okay. Line conventions. Standardization of lines used on technical drawings by line weight and style. So if I'm saying to you, hey, you um, hidden lines should look like this. Uh, Dimension lines should look like this. Extension lines should look like this. Center lines should look like this. Those are all line conventions. And generally speaking, they're agreed upon in the general public. But a lot of times, corporation, uh, companies or research universities or research groups or individual groups within companies will have their own line conventions because they want things to be standardized, okay? which helps with communication. Line weight is the thickness of a line. Anyone who's ever made a table on Microsoft Word or Google Docs knows that you can change the thickness of lines on tables. Um, that's what line uh, weight is. Long break line. Okay, so if I have a really long object and I can't fit it all on a page, I'll create a long break line that will show hey, um, this object continues on into the distance, um, but I've skipped a whole portion of it. You guys remember the long break line? Okay. Say that again? Say it again? It's not cutting it in half. Um, let me, hold on. Hold on one second. Let me, I thought that had an example on, on the Quizlet. What's up, Alex? Same, totally the exact same. Um, so, so if we have, um, for instance, here, we see a long break line. You see that this is a hundred feet, and this is twenty feet. Well, if if you actually want to just break off, that's a bad picture. Sorry. Hold on one second. Here. This is, this is straight from PLTW. So remember this picture? If this was 12 inches here and this was 1.25 inches, it wouldn't make sense that this is 12 inches here, right? Because if this is 1.25 inches, it should be way longer if this was 12 inches. So you draw a long break line, which allows you to get the whole object in the picture and the dimension, but you don't have to draw the entirety of it. Okay, that's what a long break line is. 
I'll see if I can add that to the Quizlet. Uh, measurement, using dimensions, quantity, or capacity. Um, that's just a straight up vocab. Multi-view drawing. Think we all know what multi-view drawings are at this point? Yes? Okay, front, side, top. Okay. Object line. An object line, it sounds like, wait, wait why is it called an object line? It's a, weird, a little bit of a weird designation. Um, but an object line is just the line of an object, okay? And those are always going to be drawn the thickest and the darkest, okay? Oblique sketch. This is cabinet and cavalier. A form of pictorial in which an object is represented is true width and height, but the depth can be any size. Okay, so those oblique sketches, cabinet and cavalier, those are, cabinet and cavalier are both considered oblique sketches. Oblique sketches are um, where you're giving the width and the height, but then you could go out in the distance as far as you want. Orthographic projection. Um, I think I have, okay, so orthographic projection is this. If you take a look at a 3D object and kind of put a glass box around it, if you were to look through one piece of glass, the orthographic projection is that part that you would see. So here, this is the orthographic projection looking through this way, looking through this way, and looking through this way. Yeah? An orthographic, a multi-view drawing is an orthographic projection. So one side, the front side, is an orthographic projection of one side of the object. Does that make sense? Okay. That was a good question. Perspective sketch. There you go. It, it gets smaller in the distance. Pictorial sketch. So um, pictorial sketch is an interesting one. But... A pictorial sketch is anything where you're taking a, a 3D object and you're representing it on a piece of paper in three dimensions where you can see all the dimensions. So it's not an orthographic projection where you're seeing just one side, like this picture of a stapler. These are all pictorial sketches. They're from all sorts of different angles and all that kind of stuff. It doesn't matter because they're all pictorial sketches, which it shows an object's height, width, and depth in a single view. These are all clearly isometric which happens to be one form of a pictorial sketch. A plane, a flat surface, okay? A plane is a flat surface. A point is a location in space, sure. Profile, an outline of an object when viewed from one side. So um, these are kind of like profiles. The difference between orthographic projection and just a profile is um, it's just the outline would be a profile. Okay, projection line. This one is a little bit uh, challenging, but I want you to think about it like this. Look, this is an orthographic projection. Everyone following me? This is an orthographic projection. You're looking through this glass, let's say. Well, if I were to draw a line from a point on the surface of an object I'm looking at, draw a line straight to a plane, and you're projecting it all at the same angle here, 90 degrees, then these lines here are projection lines. Okay? So it's kind of, if you think about like a projector like we're using right now, that projection line would be the line between that light source and the board. Does that make sense? Now the only difference for our purposes is that projection lines are all going at the same angle, whereas the projector kind of spreads out as it goes. Projection lines, in our case, we all want it to go at the same angle, so we have a realistic representation of that orthographic projection, of that object. Projection plane, this is the projection plane, okay? Portion. Um, so a portion, we have to be careful between proportion and scale. Proportion is the ratio of one thing within a single object um, 
to another. So the height's relationship to its depth. So if I take, hold on one second. If I take my coffee cup, for instance, it's three times as tall as it is wide. So the proportions of this are height equals three times width, okay? But really, it's just about the relationship of one thing to another, okay? So, hey, I, I have, this is proportional. Well, what's the proportion? Oh, it's five to one, okay? I'm, it's the proportion. It's a relationship between two. Now, let's contrast that to scale. Yeah? Like, proportional would be like, it's like, wait, two questions. So, mm -hmm. is it like the rise of the line, or is it like proportional, like, if yesterday was like, draw a duplicate of a drawing, you have to draw like the same size, the same. Like, so, that's where it gets a little bit tricky. And because if you look at definition number two, scale uses the word proportion. Okay? So scale is either, it's like a map scale, where you see, okay, um, from here to here is 10 miles, and then you can figure out how long it is to get from California to Florida by using that scale. Okay, if this is 100 miles, then I just trace, oh, that's one inch is 100 miles, so if it's 12 inches away, it's 1,200 miles. But also, a scale is the proportion between two sets of dimensions used to develop accurate, larger, or smaller prototypes or models. So a scale model would be like if you draw, create a car, right, and the scale is 200 to 1, then the, the size of that car will be 200 times less than the size of the car. Now, that is the scale you're using, okay, and the proportion is also 200 to 1. So it's a little bit tricky which is why what I'm suggesting for this, read these definitions, memorize them, understand them, but realistically, proportion. What, what we're talking about when we're talking about proportions as much in this class is less about scale and much more about um, the proportions of one si uh, like size to another, like the height to the width. So for instance, your green widget, uh, um, a lot of you had to redo it. Raise your hand if I told you your, your green widget wasn't proportional. And you had to redo it, yeah, because maybe it was crushed too much. It looked too long instead of it, because it wasn't proportional. It the the height to the width measure uh, proportion was not accurate. Okay. Yeah. Not all four to seven. Okay, section lines. These are section lines. Remember, if I cut an object, if I cut an object and I'm looking at something interior, a cross section of it, then I have to put these section lines showing me, hey, I've made this cut, okay? Those are section lines. Shading, we know what shading is. Short break line. A line which shows where a part is broken to reveal detail behind the part or to shorten a long continuous part. Um, so, so now that's a little confusing, right? Because isn't that what a long break line is? Yeah? Anybody with me on that? Anyone catching that? Hold on. Hold on. A long break line is exactly this. To shorten a long continuous part. That's what a long break line is. For, shh, for all intents and purposes, a short break line is this type of line here, where we're showing it's this first part, a line which shows where a part is broken to reveal detail, okay? So it's broken here to reveal a detail. Now, also notice that there's no space between these two parts here because this is just one part and you're just showing the break where it starts being cut to be a cross section. Yeah. What do you mean by where the part is actually broken? Or... So here what we see is this is just one object. 
If I didn't have this short break line, I wouldn't show this cross section. But I'm showing that, hey, I'm doing this short break here, which shows that this is actually a different um, view than this. It's the exact same object. I'm not stretching it or shrinking it like a long break line where you're cutting a whole section out of it. This is more like, hey, it's a break between my views. So see I'm seeing a regular view, and here I'm seeing a cross-sectional view. And so this is where that object is broken. It's not actually broken like I smashed it to pieces. It's just the break between the two types of views. Okay? Shape. I think we know what a shape is. Sketch is a rough representation of the main features of an object. Um, generally speaking, class, can I get everyone's eyes for a second? Um, sketching and drawing is kind of one of the terms in engineering world where you can use them interchangeably a lot of times. But really, a sketch is generally meant to be more like a rough estimate, where if I say an engineering drawing, that means it's precise and accurate. Okay. Solid, three-dimensional body. Three-dimensional means it has height, width, and depth. By the way, let me just complete it. If this is height and this is depth, then this is width. So depth is front to back, height is top to bottom, and width is from side to side. Tone is the general effect of color or of light and shade in a picture. So the tone of your shading might be dark or light. Two-dimensional, we know that. Vanishing point, there's my vanishing point for a perspective sketch. View, colloquial term for views of an object projected onto two or more orthographic planes in a multi-view drawing. Uh, width, I just went through width, and then we're done. 